G'day and welcome, my name is Matthew. In this video, we're gonna have a look at the software program from Ruida, RD Works, and that's for their motion controllers for the laser machines. Now, this video is for those that haven't used RD Works before. It's just a quick basic overview on some of the tools and functions of the software to get you up and going with your laser machine. So this is the user interface of RD Works version eight. And up the top, we have our file menu system, which we can access using the mouse, similar to other software programs where most of the tools uh, are available in the menus. Now, some of these tools are also available as tool buttons, either along the top or down the side. And uh, if we have a look over here on the right hand side, we also have our work where we've got different layers that will appear as we start to create objects. And down the bottom, we have the color palette where we can set the color for each of those layers. Now I'll go into um, layer colors and uh, settings in a future video, as well as we'll look at the document management of files that are on your controller, the user settings and how to test and move your laser around using the test tab. Lower down on the right hand side, we have the laser work where we're able to start, pause or cancel, stop our uh, job on the laser machine, as well as saving files to a USB drive and outputting them so that you can transport that to your laser machine. Now we also have uh, down lower, we have the settings and if your device is not listed here in the device setting, then I recommend that you have a look at the video that I created for Ruida on establishing connections via ethernet, USB or U-Disc. So over here we have the basic tools for drawing and we have the first one here is the select tool which uh, allows you to select an object and resize objects. And then we have our line drawing tools, our shape tools and text tools. Across the top we have a new file, open file, save file and then importing and exporting files. We have our zoom in, zoom out buttons here. The zooming in and zooming out can also be done using the scroll wheel on your mouse clicking the mouse in the center and dragging it around. Uh, so that's just navigating. That can also be done using the scroll uh, sliders on the side and the bottom of the work area. Then we have our preview button, which will allow us to preview the work before it goes to the laser machine, grouping of objects, ungrouping objects, and aligning objects, and also setting the size and locking aspect ratios and things like that, as well as rotating objects. So they can all be done using the toolbars. So we'll have a look at this toolbar down the left hand side. The first one is the selection um, mouse button and that allows us to select objects that are on our work area. And then we have our node editing tool. And we're gonna have a look firstly at the line drawing tool. It's very simple to use. Click with the mouse and release. And then you can click again when you finish drawing your line. Now if you want a perfectly straight line horizontally or vertically, the way that you do that is click once with the mouse, then press the control and hold it on the keyboard and you'll see that the line stays perfectly straight. And if we hold it down, we'll go perfectly vertical in this direction. So you can draw your line and then click with the mouse and let go of the control key afterwards. And that will give you that perfectly straight line. The next tool is the polygon tool, which allows you to draw polygons. Basically start by clicking with the mouse and clicking, continuing each different line until you've finished your shape. Now you can finish your shape by closing it with the first node that you drew and it will give you that first shape, uh, that, that shape that you wanted. Now the other way that you can do it is you can click with the mouse and after you've finished drawing your line, press the right mouse button and it will stop at the last node that you placed. Now I mentioned nodes. Nodes are the individual spots on the shape that you can manipulate and I mentioned earlier the node editing tool. So if we select this one here you can see each of these nodes is a little square and those squares using the node editing tool can be manipulated to change your shape. Now you can also add nodes by using the add node button here and then double clicking to place a new node. That node then can be manipulated by dragging it around we can also delete nodes if we want. So if we wanted to delete this node here, we highlight it and it would go green. And then we can use this button here that says delete nodes. And if I zoom out first so you can see it up here, we delete that node and it would bring it back to those nodes there. Now if we want to break this shape apart, we could also select one node here, press the shift button on the keyboard and select the other node. And we can use this one here, which is called break curve. 
that now has placed this into two separate pieces. So we have this piece over here, which we can move, and this piece here. So we can edit these now individually as well using the node editing tool where we can add nodes and uh, remove nodes and also still manipulate them in different directions. Now I mentioned just then that we can move things around and you see that I use this purple X in the center but we have these other eight handles on the side. The four corner handles can be used to drag the shape and resize it with the correct aspect ratio. Uh, or the side handles can be used to stretch the shape in different directions. We can also resize a shape by selecting it and then using the values at the top here. So we can see the value here is 89.754 millimeters wide by 89 high. So we can change that to 50 millimeters by 50 millimeters and I'll change the values in each of those so we can change the size to fit. We can also lock the aspect ratio. So using this lock, we can change it now by going 100 millimeters. It will also change the width to the same uh, aspect ratio. So if we had this unlocked and we made this 150 millimeters, we can see that it would stretch the object. Now, if we lock the aspect ratio and still do it as uh, 200 millimeters, it would change it in the correct aspect. So it would change the width as well as the height. So that's the lock button. You can also use the percentages if you wanted this size to be reduced by 50%, you could also do that in the percentage button there. Now with the rotate, we can put a value into rotate. Now this uh, button here is where it would rotate from. So this is rotating in the center, but we can ask it to rotate from a corner, a side, etc. So I'll show you the example here. So I'll leave it on in the center. And if I tell it to rotate 45 degrees, it would rotate it center of that object 45 degrees. If uh, we change it so that the rotation is from this bottom corner, then we say OK. And if we rotate that uh, 50 degrees, it would rotate it on that bottom corner 50 degrees, but not the center. Sometimes that can be seen easier when you're using a square. So we'll do this here. We'll just draw a square and we'll use the rotate. So we'll select that object and we'll tell it to rotate from the center and we'll rotate 45 degrees. You can see that it's centered and it's rotated 45 degrees. However, now if we tell it to rotate from the bottom corner and say OK, and we wanna rotate this 45 degrees, it would rotate it on this bottom corner 45 degrees. So that's your rotate and your positions for rotation. With your aligning of objects, if we had a circle that we wanted to align, so we have a circle draw, we select those two objects and we now can use these alignment tools. So we could align them at the top, we could align them together, um, different objects. So basically we have aligning on the left, on the right, we have aligning at the top or the bottom, or we have aligning in the center horizontally and center vertically. So this is the font or text tool. We can select it, click anywhere on the work area and type the text that you want. And you can type multiple lines here if you want and then select the height that you want to enter each line at. So we put in here, you know, um, 15 millimeters tall and say, okay, and we get our text. Now we can manipulate the text by dragging using the selection tool and dragging the corners. We can resize it. We can also shrink or stretch the text by dragging the side handles or if we want to move that text around use the center one to drag it into place if you want to rotate again you can use the rotation tool so we select the where we want to rotate do we want to rotate it from the center or the corners in this case we might leave it on the center say okay and we might want to rotate that um, 270 degrees so that we can have it running down the side of our page and we can again reposition our text. If you want to edit your font, what you can do is uh, double click on it and we might want to uh, remove some of the spelling mistakes or extra spacing that we put in so we can uh, fix that up. We can um, also change the font that we want to use and also the size and say OK and that would then apply that to our work area. 
These next tools down the side here, we have our horizontal mirror, which we can flip text if you wanted to engrave in reverse. Uh, we could also horizontally, uh, vertically flip by using the flip tool here. Another useful tool in RD Works is the matrix copy. So if we've got this shape, say we wanted to repeat this and we have a board that we want to repeat this on, we could use the matrix copy. So let's just position it on our uh, work area. We'll place it down the bottom corner here and say we want to see how many of these we could fit on a, on a, um, on a sheet of material. Let's say we wanted to draw up a shape that we want to fit it in. So we just quickly draw a, uh, a rectangle and say that our uh, material size is 600 millimeters by 300 millimeters. Position our material in there and where we want it. And now what we can do is use the matrix copy. So we just select just the shape and use matrix copy. And it will ask us how many rows and columns that we want to have. So we know that this is um, about uh, 50 millimeters wide and we have a six. So we might want to put uh, 15 across. Um, it's not all going to fit on there, but we want about uh, three high and we want a space of one millimeter between each. We can put the spacing between the X and the Y. So this will repeat it 15 times um, and three rows um, with a one millimeter spacing on the X and the Y. Now the next button here is which way it would repeat the array. So currently it's set at the uh, left hand side top going right and down. So we want to change this. So we click this until we have it so that it's the right hand side bottom going up and across to the left. And now we say OK. And we can see that it's repeated those. And we overestimated there so we can select the objects that don't fit and then press the delete button. So we know now that these would fit on our workboard. So the next thing that I want to show you is grouping of objects. So we've got these four different objects on the screen here. And what we can do is we can select two of these objects here by holding the shift key on the keyboard and clicking with the mouse on the edge of the shape. And then we can use the group button up the top to group those together. That means that these two now are bound together in a group, which means they will also move together. They can't be selected individually. It would select it as a group unlike the ungrouped items that we can select individually. If we want to ungroup these two items, again, just use the ungroup button at the top, and now you can select these items individually and move them around. This is very handy if you have some work where you have a shape inside a shape that you want to keep it together. You might have this shape in here, and you've aligned it in the uh, center and uh, horizontally and vertically. We could then group those objects together using the group button. This now becomes a single object that we can move around the workpiece without having to realign or do anything else with it. We can also group two groups together. So if I selected this uh, object here and say we had this in this position, we select shift and hold down the second one. We group those objects together. We now have a second group. And if we group this one by holding shift and selecting the second group, we can now also group those two groups together. So now the whole item, the whole image is being grouped together and won't lose any parts, especially if you're going to be copying and pasting between different documents or in and out of, um, you know, photo editing or design software. Now, once you also have them grouped, any sizing does, any sizing you do will also apply to all the objects in that group. Now, when you're ungrouping objects so that have been, or groups that have been grouped together, we need to ungroup once, and then we would have the two groups uh, being broken up into individual items. So what we'll have a look at is importing a graphic to engrave. So we're going to use the import button up the top here, and we'll just select this image down the bottom here. And you can see it's got uh, some blues, blacks, and yellow. And what we'll do is import that, and we can see that it changes it to a grayscale image. Now, if we were to have a look at the output to the laser as it sits without any editing, we hit the preview button, and we can see that some of the yellow there has been uh, emitted from the output, so we wouldn't have a very good engraving. What we need to do is have a look at the bitmap handle. So we've selected our image, and we can use the bitmap handle button on the toolbar. And now if we have a look at the resolution, it's set at 72 pixels per inch. What we'd like to do is set the output resolution to, let's say, 254 pixels per inch. 
and we're going to dither that as a dot graphic. I will zoom in on that grey section and if I apply that to view first we can see that it changes the grey to blacks and whites. The black is when the laser is firing and the white is when it's not. So we can see that it will give us the effect of a, a grey scale on that uh, yellow section that was yellow and the blacks is a solid black. Now we can also then apply to source and then once we hit OK we will be able to have a look at our image. So here's our image here ready to go so we'll go preview and if we preview now we can see that those sections that we had yellow will now appear as a grey scale on our output so this would be a much better engraving from before. The next tool that we'll quickly look at is the ruler up here or the measuring tool so we click on that and if we have a look down the bottom we have L equals so that's the length equals 116 millimeters so that's the last measurement that was taken so to measure a distance between some objects so if we zoom in here we can click with the mouse once let go and drag down and we can see that it gives us 22.16 millimeters we click that and it would just uh, save that measurement there so that's for measuring distance on the work area if you wanted to measure an area on the workspace we could click and hold the mouse and drag and we then get an area that we can drag doesn't matter how far we go and when we let go it will tell us that the width is 330.2 and the height was 234.5 so that's uh, giving us the measuring of an area by clicking and dragging or the measurement of a distance by clicking letting go and then clicking again will give us the distance and that's all seen down the bottom on the very bottom part of the screen where it's got the length equals and to finish off this video we're going to have a look at uh, aligning objects around the work area so if I wanted to select this group of objects here and uh, position it at the top left of the page I can use this button at the top here top left we can move it to the top right, bottom right, bottom left, and also the center of the page. Now, if we wanted everything in the center of the page, we would have to select each individual item and select center of page. I'll show you what the difference is if we select them as a, a multiple selection with the mouse and then ask it to center it in the center of the page. It keeps everything positioned in the same aspect. But if we wanted these all positioned, again, like I mentioned, just select each individual item and we could center them into the center of the page so that they line up how you want them to. If you wanted to now put this up into the top area near your datum point, we could uh, move it up there and you could set that job to run. So I hope that helped you get up and going with RD Works and your laser machine. There are other videos in this Arita series on my YouTube channel, so check those out. You can also hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to be notified when I release new videos in the future. If you want to contact Ruida, you can use their website rd-acs.com and go to the support page. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care. Cheers.